titanium type of day with the H2R. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Back again on the beautiful crazy H2R. You guys asked for the H2R content so here it is. A lot of H2R content coming up for you guys. Today is back to part installs. The last few videos with the H2R were kind of just like riding around, riding with people. The bike moto test the H2. We even race that bike against the H2R. So if you haven't checked Bro, what the? I was like, why am I getting smacked? That truck, whatever it had in it, was flying all over. Hopefully, it didn't get any rock chips or whatever on the H2R. For today's video, we are going to install some parts. I talked about it a little bit previously. I told you guys that. Unfortunately, some of you guys love the green radiator guard, which yeah, you can't really see from here. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about the radiator guard I always tell you guys to always get radiator guards in your bikes uh, Because it's not that expensive. It's like a hundred bucks around a hundred bucks Maybe a little bit more if you got something nicer, but it protects your radiators uh, Which can cost upwards uh, of a thousand dollars plus the job to replace them, which is like a pain So it's a very easy thing part to buy and install as well so that's why I always recommend getting radiator guards and I got green radiator guards uh, for this bike. I don't know, I thought it looked a little bit tacky and I wasn't like a huge fan of them. Which is why uh, you guys saw, like I talked about a lot, that I wasn't sure about it. And eventually I ended up switching to the black ones. So we're going to install the black radiator guards. Uh, we're also going to be installing levers. The current radiator guard I have is from Cox Racing, which are like great, they're alright, but I feel like uh, the EvoTech looks more durable and higher quality, you know what I mean? I don't know, they just feel a little bit better and I have them on most of my bikes. I think the only bike, other bike besides this that has the Fox Raider Guard is the m 1000 R. Uh, but I don't know, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of the edges. The edges are too thick on the Cox Racing, it's not as symmetrical and uh, the mesh itself feels a little more flimsy. The puzzle levers are levers I have on my H2 and I really like those levers but I didn't want it to be kind of like look just like this bike you know what I mean I want them to have uh, differences and all that so for the levers of this uh, for the HR we got Bonamichi which is I uh, you guys know me I love that brand we have that brand all over on my Fireblade on I believe uh, my R1M we got some parts from there we definitely got some on the V4R so we have parts from Bonamichi from all over. I think they have to make su such pretty good quality product. So those are the levers that we got for this bike. And shout out to Motivation. Check the top link in the description down below if you guys want to get some of these aftermarket parts. So shout out to Motivation. Click the top of the link of the description down below. Also I have uh, which is separate from these uh, but you guys know me I bought all type of custom green titanium bolts which are very expensive uh, and also like a lot of them some of them are like custom made for this bike we've already got a ton of them but we already got some more uh, these parts I wasn't very sure about getting because they're kind of like suspension parts so you're not really going to be able to see it as much unless you know or like you look kind of like from behind the bike uh, slash under it, but they're pretty major uh, like big pieces of titanium Replacing you know the stock pieces which reduces the weight by about half the weight So you know in general when you're doing all these I mean mainly I do it because it looks amazing But also I'm like why not you know benefit from saving a little bit of weight at the end of the day like with all the titanium stuff I have it for sure is gonna add up to I want to say around like between three to five pounds isn't much in general but like four bikes a few pounds here and there matter plus as i was saying i love the way they look 
So it's kind of like a win-win. The only negative with titanium stuff is that it's insanely expensive, which is why I don't do it on all my bikes. My V4R has some titanium. So far, my M1000 R has the most titanium because it has the blue titanium, which I absolutely love the way that looks. So the M1000 has a ton. The Rush actually has a few gold and titanium stuff. Uh, I wanted to do more, but as I said, like it's very expensive. I'm talking about like, I could be buying pretty much a Grom instead of spending the money on titanium bolts and stuff. But yeah, like each titanium bolt, depending on the size and the shape and all that, literally costs between from like $30 upwards to like sometimes like close to $100 for one single bolt. So it's like very, very expensive to get titanium stuff. And in general, I don't think like if you're real like bang for the buck, I don't know if it's worth it for, you know, just like casual riding and stuff like that. But you guys know me, I like to bling out my bikes and make them look great. Especially the bikes that are like special to me. And you guys know the H2R is the most special bike to me. So I had to do it for this bike and full send it. <laughs> Thank you, man. bike is so loud the videos don't do it justice whatsoever but if I give this bike any sort of throttle everyone stops and stares you're like what is going on here oh man my knuckles with these gloves I should have not worn the titanium ones today but since it's a titanium type of day I figured you know wear my titanium gloves as well I went and did some boxing and MMA yesterday for like three hours so my knuckles are all bruised up I'm beat today I wanted to chill and take a little break but I was like nah we gotta get some content oh man I don't know if you guys can see it but yeah you can, it's definitely bruised up HR is a pretty demanding bike I would say it's a lot smoother and more comfortable to ride than my H2 because you know it's like a stock tune so it's very smooth. It's not like abrupt like my H2. But still at the same time, I feel like if I rode for example, if I was like feeling like this, usually I would ride like the M1000 RR. The Fireblade is pretty intense too. Uh, possibly the Ducati. I like the Ducati because there's no like one, like you can ride it hard or you can like ride it and it's gonna be like still somewhat smooth and like more chill. R1 isn't too bad too for like a chill ride. The Prilly actually I really like as a daily. It's a very comfortable bike and very smooth. So very easy to ride. But it's an H2R type of day. So this is what we're doing. So yeah, let me show you some of my suspension stuff. So we got pretty big suspension link bolts are going to be going right here. Even this metal plate right here that you see that is black. That's actually going to be green titanium, which I'll show you in a second. But it's all type of things all around that area. And I'm really praying it's not oh my god this is gonna be a nightmare now that I'm thinking about it I think all of this has to come off I'm praying it's not I might have made a mistake this might have not been the best parts for me to buy because I really don't want to take the entire subframe off since you know we replace it with a carbon subframe that's gonna be a big job yeah it's all of these right there but also I got like more which go down here these shouldn't be as hard I believe all these like bolt right there we'll see we'll figure out and it's pretty pricey part let me show you it right here so we got these these are the big ones I was telling you about look at this beautiful titanium so light but yeah these I'm pretty sure go right here I don't know if you guys can see but yeah all the links down there so this will look really cool actually because you'll de it'll definitely make it pop there this is very hidden and given how much of a job it is I don't know if this is gonna be worth it especially because it was stupid expensive for that but it's right here. Now I got some extra green titanium bolts to fit like around the bike. A lot of them. But this is the piece I was telling you about. So yeah, that is going to go all the way down there. So that's not going to be, I don't think that's going to be easy. It doesn't look like you can clear stuff there without taking the subframe off. Well, it's going to be a stressful day. This is always scary when I put it here. I'm like, is it is it staying? <laughs> so, as I said, the Evotech performance. Shout out to Motivation again. 
but you can see like I like this honeycomb pattern and very thin edges which I really like this one has very thick edges the mesh is a bit like doesn't seem as durable like when I push on it this is solid this kind of like flexes a little bit you know what I mean and the edges being thick I don't know it doesn't look as clean but also uh, because this OEM mesh here for the intake is black that's why I wanted to go with black and then the brake lines that we got upgraded are gonna pop more because this is black behind it so this is why we're changing this Bonamichi for the H2R and these are the levers I thought I'd go and replace these. They look honestly pretty similar to OEM, but still upgraded, so. <laughs> what in the chain that is falling off is going on here? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know why it's here. MVs, man. They're always here for something. Yeah. Don't scare me like that, man. I have the rush. They're not dailies. No, they, no. <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel with this. I feel like this is, you know, yeah. and I'm just casually, like, you know, taking it around town and all. Japanese. More reliable and also what I love about them is that they like making your life easy sometimes like I learned recently I don't want to speak too fast but apparently the H2 fans are compatible with the H2R it's plug-and-play oh, cool yeah yeah this doesn't come with fans because you know race bike yeah. but I was like stressing because like oh my like I have to get fans and wire it and stupid and like make a dial for a button apparently so yeah that's what I was told uh, I'm gonna test it because now it's gonna get cold and it honestly it runs pretty cool it's like the coolest running bike yeah. so so far I don't really need it unless I'm going to events and all because you know you're going around a parking lot so I'm gonna test it in winter see how I like it but probably for next summer I'll get just the H2 fans just so I have that peace of mind you know I, don't, I, don't, I'm not good at I know same I'm the same way yeah. I can screw off and on some bolts but that's pretty much yeah. it <laughs> electronics are above my pay grade yeah, I mean, clearly now I forgot lefty and righty. I haven't, because of Mikey, I never do anything at home anymore. I'm always like, ah, I'll just ride over, you know. Because why not? It's like my excuse to ride around, going to install parts. I'll see you guys tonight. Yeah, in like a little bit. <laughs> we'll try. Real quick, I'll turn it on. I'll show you guys some of the new parts that we installed. Let me double check that I'm rolling first. Yep. All right. We actually managed to do the suspension link. I don't know if you can see it all the way down there. I might add a little clip that I took from Instagram. We put bolts here. We put this guy, this guy we're gonna need to cut uh, and thread. So we're waiting on this piece, but we put bolts here, down here. There's like three, four of them down there. This guy, this guy, like, you know, the other side. This big piece is the one I was saying is very expensive. Managed to make it fit and work. So. If you know, you know type of thing. This is very expensive and, you know, a very technical piece, but it's cool now that it's on the bike. A lot of extra stuff, like put some here, put some titanium here, here. And of course, shout out again to Motivation. The levers actually looked a lot better when they were like on the bike. I like the way they're machined with a like slit open and they're, they're breakaway levers. So, you know, you can like adjust how high they go and all that and the adjustability from here. They definitely look, they have that OEM look, but a little bit shorter too. So I really like these levers actually. Way more than I thought I would. And of course, we have the black radiator guard. I think it finally cleaned up the look. And Mikey, the best tech in the world, he said also that uh, this fits a lot better because it actually, it's not a square, it goes over the radiator guard. So since Mikey said it, I believe it. We have a little bit of Loctite here, so let me get that. I'll clean her up when we get home, but yeah, we put like a ton of titanium everywhere, more titanium down here, down here, you can see literally like this thing is titaniumed out with bolts and stuff. I love how I can hear the supercharger, literally just from, it stopped and I can hear it. Oh yeah, I always like stuff that are like right here because it's the stuff I look at all the time, so you notice it more. Okay, clutch feels good. I think the brake is a little bit far out, but easily adjustable. I think my clutch is a little bit lower than my right, so I might raise it up a tad. Oh, there you go. I forgot that it's already warmed up. I'm like taking it easy on the throttle and all. It was a successful day installing parts. Nothing gave us too much of a headache or anything because when you're doing this much custom work and we still had to cut a little bit of titanium 
uh, to make it fit for the rear set. Yeah, I'm actually not gonna be doing going too fast or anything because we used a lot of red Loctite. If you, just information for you guys, if you're doing work on your rear set and stuff like that, make sure you use red Loctite because rear sets vibrate a lot and those bolts will fall out. So technically, even right now, even though we use red Loctite, you should give it some time to uh, kind of like settle. So these bolts don't go like flying off. But you can literally see the Loctite right here on the titanium bolts. But yeah, this bike is coming along. There's one thing I wanted to do the rear. It's not like a passenger seat, you know, the little real cowl where the on the H2 says H2. I got a little piece, like part of my custom seat kit that says H2R, but because it's rubber, we need special staples for it and stuff like that. We just didn't have time to do today, so it's not a big deal. It's a little thing that I'll do next time. Yeah, these lovers actually feel a lot better than the stock ones. So I'm pretty happy with the mods that we put on today on the H2R. Bike is looking better and better. Levers honestly like matter a lot when it comes to... I'm not going to split because I actually want to adjust my brake lever a little bit. No, other way. Okay. I'm also trying not to put too much pressure on my rear sets for now. Yeah, as I said, I've had a bad uh, situation with it. It's all like part of the riding experience when you're riding for a long time. When I installed rear sets at a different shop actually, but apparently like Loctite was used and all that, but then the bolt literally full on came off, came loose. And I was like riding like this because I couldn't put my foot anywhere. And then my hip was cramping and it was just like a mess because I couldn't use, uh, I think it was actually on my, right side because yeah I couldn't use the rear brake which wasn't as bad if it happened on my left side it would have been a lot worse because then I wouldn't be able to like shift properly and that would be like horrible being stuck in one gear especially when you're stopping and going uh, the next few mods that are coming for it are mainly performance mods you know I'm changing the sprocket size I'm uh, doing uh, like the best uh, chain you can go on your bike like an endurance chain uh, I might also be going back to a different tire size so i actually th this bike comes oh 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 i have to tell you about this we're doing some tire research because i'm like you know are these tires right rated for like high speeds uh since you know i'm not using like the oem tires on the hr because the oem tires are slicks so you know since i'm riding on the street not on the track i don't want to be using like slicks on the street it takes a lot longer for them to warm up and also like if there's debris, rocks, water, anything, it's very, very slippery and dangerous. So there's no point of using slicks on the street. So I put street tires on them that are pretty decent and we went up a tire size. So the OEM was a 190 in the rear. Uh, we did a 200 because I was like, I was like just shocked. I was like, why they put a 190 on an H2R? You know I mean? Most leader bikes, even the H2 comes with a 200. So I upped it to a 200, but if you guys don't know, a bigger tire means extra weight which looks better yeah but also like unless you're like going crazy like a professional like MotoGP racer on a track you're not really you don't need the 200 tire you know what I mean because you can change the sidewall by changing like the rest of the tire size so we're going like 190 55 instead of like let's say 260 you know what I mean so it's pretty much like going to be the same thing so you don't really need a bigger tire size it's mainly for looks uh, it does feel a bit more stable to have a bigger tire a smaller tire is going to make it kind of like more quick changes and stuff like that which is also a good thing with such a heavy bike so you can you know maybe that's why they did a 190 tire on it since it's lighter you get more speed out of it you go faster especially when you're doing top speeds and also on top of it it's like a lot easier to throw the bike around which is optimal for the track since this is a heavy bike uh, but yeah what I was trying to tell you is that when we're doing research I was like let me uh, look what the OEM tire is rated for speed wise and it actually didn't have a rating the slicks that it came with it but the Bridgestone tire that comes with the H2R stock just for the rear tire is over $1400 so probably like if you buy it and get it shipped it's $1500 I don't know if you guys understand $1500 even if you get like the best tire set so rear and the front it's usually only like even if you get like the best stuff it's maybe five hundred dollars 
know what I mean? So it's really not that much in comparison to one rear tire of the H2R is 1500 That's literally the price of three full tire sets that are also like really high quality tire sets, not like, you know, normal tires. Because most normal tires, if you want to get a set, it's around, I want to say like $400. Uh, sometimes even less depending on the tires you go for but like a good quality set of tires front and rear would be like $400 if you get something really nice like the Michelin's or something like that I think it's like 500 for the set for the rear and the front assuming the front tire is like a thousand it's usually a bit cheaper than the rear uh, that's like $2,500 and the bike needs fuel surprisingly I don't remember the last time I filled up I feel like when I ride the H2 I need to fill up uh, like every time I ride it but which is weird I think the tune has a lot to do with it like this being an OEM uh, H2R tune I think it's like really nice and well done but Brent Tuning also are starting to tune H2s they didn't used to do it before but now they're starting to do it and work on it so stay tuned subscribe to the channel because we might be putting the H2R on the dyno and possibly even tuning in the future. So stay tuned for that. That's gonna be very crazy and exciting. I can't imagine this bike on the dyno, especially because I upgraded my air filter in the front, you know, so more air with some tune adjustments. It should be a lot better. And uh, Troy actually told me, just by like adjusting the air to fuel ratio, we can make 30 wheel horsepower on this bike. I don't think you guys understand what that means. 30 wheel horsepower is like the difference from like I don't know how to explain it like it's it's massive 30 wheel like usually if you tune a bike stock you can get like around 10 if you get around 10 or over 10 that's really good you're doing really well like that's a really good tune if let's say you go from like 180 to 210 that's amazing it's very rare where you gain that much and that's usually with a full exhaust system and all that. This one, with just adjustment of air fuel ratio, we can get 30 more wheel horsepower, which technically if you're calculating crank, let's say it's like an extra 40 horsepower. So this bike will be close to 400 horsepower if we tune it. So how crazy is that? So yeah, hopefully a lot of exciting plans coming up with the H2R. So make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel, please. We're getting very close to a million. And I hope you guys like this video. Peace out and ride safe. Later.